Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I'll be rounding up on snake bites. And I will be talking specifically about snake poisoning today. And I will cover the epidemiology, types of snake, and specific signs and symptoms. By way of introduction, Venomous animals generally do cause a great deal of morbidity and mortality. Snake poisoning is not just a local problem, it's a global issue. Most cases don't get to the hospitals because many of the affected individuals don't have the money or many of them don't believe in treatment nor by the hospital doctors and nurses. They believe in local healers. Those treated may not have their records kept. Therefore, global report is grossly deficient. Still on epidemiology, snakes are found in most parts of the world, but more in some regions than the other. If you want to live without seeing snakes, you better live you know, in Arctic, Antarctic, and some small islands. In other words, Snakes are not found there. About 5 million people will have snake bite incidents per year worldwide. More than 90% of affected individuals will survive. About 1 to 2% of those who survive will develop profound sequelae. But some will survive with full recovery even without any medical attention. Still on epidemiology, we can tag snake poisoning as occupational problem because it's mostly found among farmers, herdsmen, hunters, and plantation workers. There is seasonal variation to snake bites and envenomation. It is more in summertime and rainy season. Males are more beaten than females and lower extremities are more affected than other parts of the body. Snakes are cold-blooded animals and they are carnivores. The venom is a weapon to get food. What are the clinical features of snake bite? Anxiety, agitation, rational behavior, Pains and needle sensation in extremities, spasm of hands and feet, dizziness, is a vagal syncope, and bradycardia. Severity determinants, which means what are those factors that will determine how severe snake bite poisoning will be? Children do receive larger dose of envenomation, and why that? When we compare their body size, relatively, they receive larger dose. Comorbidities will worsen situation with elderly. The bigger the victim, the less the amount of toxin per kilogram, and then the outcome is expected to be good. The more the comorbidities, the worse the harmful effects of the venom. Binds to the face, trunk, or directly into the bloodstream will lead to a worse prognosis. Still on how to determine the severity, exertion after bite increases absorption of the venom and that will worsen the outcome. Increased amount of venom will lead to increased effects. Species of the snake will determine the lethality of the envenomation. Let me repeat. The species of the snake will determine the type of venom, and that will determine how lethal the envenomation will be. The nature of the first aid given will determine whether this patient will get out of this problem or not. Time interval between the bite and and the snake venom administration means a lot. If you have listened to my three previous presentations of snake bite, 
you will not be surprised by these factors because I have stated the associated factors very clearly before now. So check out the snake bias now before now published by me, please. Specific signs and symptoms. A lapis from a lapid family, for example, cobra, we have local reactions called necrosis. So there'll be local necrosis, neurotoxic symptoms, respiratory failure, intercostal muscle paralysis, and abdominal pain. When those are the symptoms, though you've not seen the snake, the affected individual could not describe the snake, you can take a guess that that is a lapid example cobra. Still on specific signs and symptoms, sea snake from the family of hydrophilidae will present with myotoxic, that is muscle, and neurotoxic symptoms. The affected individuals will present with muscle pains. There will be myoglobin release. There will be hyperkalemia. There may be cardiac arrest. And of course, acute renal failure that will be clearly depicted by the values of parameters from the serum and urinalysis. With cardiac arrest and acute renal failure, the individual is heading to the morgue very fast, that is death. So, the patient is presenting with snake bite. You've not seen the snake. There's no dead snake. Could not describe the snake. But the clinical presentation is this muscle pain. You've done your lab investigations. You could pick myoglobin. You could see hyperkalemia. EKG is showing you all those unwanted, you know, strips. And you have your bloodstream. Now you have uh, serum. You have urinalysis all done, pointing to acute renal failure. With the history of swimming in river or working as a sailor on the sea, you don't need to have any other guess besides sea snake bite. Still on specific signs and symptoms, when it comes to viper from the family of Viperidae, the affected individual will be presenting with vasculotoxic symptoms. This will lead to ischemic thrombosis and there will be gangrene of the affected limb. When you have complete blood count done, you are going to pick thrombocytopenia. And when you have coagulopathy done, there will be a problem. And also, clotting profile will reveal increased PT and APTT. There will be bleeding, bleeding the gum, bleeding in the entire body with hemostatic dysregulation. So, you don't know the type of the snake. The patient could not give the description. The snake is not dead. But the patient is presenting with gangrene at the affected limb, with features of ischemic thrombosis, with bleeding everywhere, then you can take the guess. This is viper. And the advantage of this is if there is specific or monospecific anti snake venom to viper in your region you'll be able to help this patient out pretty quickly. The venom, produced purposely by the snakes to immobilize the prey and aid in digestion. Isn't that funny? I think some people will be hearing that for the first time, right? And that is why the effect on human beings is as if we're falling you know, prey to snakes. You now immobilization, paralysis, and aid in digestion, just to kill the prey in any way. And that's why it's killing human beings as well. The venom contains toxins such as neurotoxins, cardiotoxin, crotamine, 
pre and polysynaptic neurotoxin. It also contains enzymes like acetylcholinesterase, phospholipase B, phospholipase A2. Polypeptides are also found in the venom, and that could be deposited in tissues and organs. With that, I've come to the end of all presentations as per snake bite. If you go through the four presentations on snake bite, you will have no questions again as per snake bite at all. Remember to share these presentations. Remember to check my channel for the rest. And remember to subscribe so that you can get more presentations from me immediately they are published in future. Thank you. I appreciate it.